Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Rest of Mod Daisy. Today we've got an unusual treat. Uh, one of the great things about having a, a uh, YouTube channel about working on Daisy BB guns is people uh, like to watch the videos and then they make comments and then before you know it, you got guys that want to send you their guns because they want them fixed, but they don't have the time, they don't have the uh, energy. Eh, they may be not just that, that interested. They just want that family heirloom, that childhood heirloom to get back in usable condition. So today what we've got is a Daisy Red Rider, and this is a model 1938, which is the uh, early production run of the 1938 Red Rider before they transitioned to plastic components in the trigger uh, and got rid of the bottle cap magazine. It's kind of a neat gun in a lot of respects. Let's uh, run down here to the front and take a look at overall condition. As you can see, it's got a painted surface and you can see lots of rust, lots of bubbling. Um, the bubbles are actually rust under paint. The paint hasn't given it up yet, but there's a rust component under there, and it's slowly eating away the steel. So, as you can see, like a typical Red Rider, oh, look at that barrel band. I've seen better ones than that, but that's not too bad, at least it's here. We roll down to uh, the receiver section, pull out a little bit, and you'll see the first obvious problem we have a cracked lever, which is a rotten shame. This is one of Daisy's aluminum cast levers, Daisy logo, nice piece, but prone to breakage because cast metals are cast metals. Then we get to the buttstock. The buttstock's nice. It's got a real strong red rider imprint, nice and crisp. Uh, it is the 1972 right hand sock, stock side. They flipped over to the, uh, excuse me, left hand stock, left hand side of the stock. In later years production would flip and they would put the Red Rider logo on the outside of the stock. Now this one's got a couple of problems. You can see obviously the infamous wrist crack. Now Daisy normally uses poplar which is a hardwood for these stocks but it's hardwood because it drops its sleeves every year. It's not because it's a hard wood. This stock crack flaw is common on a lot of old Daisies because they get beat up. Now we're going to flip the gun over and take a look at the other side. Let's go back to the other end of the stock. Now, in this stock, you can see the grain pattern is running this way. Here's the crack on the wrist. You notice a trace of a crack just below the uh, top of the butt stock. But more alarming is this little guy right here. That crack is working its way all the way back up to in here. So we're going to have to take measures to correct that. The uh, owner wants to keep the stock, so we'll have to uh, pick the glue repair here and a glue repair there. We move on to the receiver's component, receiver side, and you'll see more bubbling of paint. There's a lot of rust hiding under there. You just can't see it right now. And now, on this side of the barrel shroud, you'll notice that it's a lot more beat up than the other side. And that means it probably spent more time leaning against a wall than the uh, other side of the gun did. But the same effect, a lot of heavy rust, a lot of uh, bubbled paint, and more rust lurking underneath that. Now, let's uh, take a look at the bottle cap real quick and see what we've got there. That's nice. It's coming out fairly easy, not fighting with me. There we are. All right, now, in previous videos, we've talked extensively about bottle caps. And this one, the shield is nice. It's good condition, but here we have a problem. There should be a small spring located right in here that retains BBs in the tube to keep double feeds and triple feeds from happening. That'll have to be replaced. Fortunately, I've got replacement parts. Now this is an older shot tube. It is a seam shot tube, but you'll notice the seam is visible, but it's not gaping or open. So it's probably not losing any atmosphere, any pressure on the shot. The uh, button, which is common to these guns, is nice and firm. It's well planted and the bore is tight and it's clear. You can actually see through it if we can get this elevation right. Oh, stop, just don't let it. Yeah, well, believe me, there's nothing there I looked. Now we're going to do our last check, which is see, we've got a trigger spring. It looks kind of weak. Let's see if the gun will cock and fire. So up we go. Ah, oh, it's having some problems with that weak spring, so we're going to bring the gun down. We're going to engage the plunger. So the trigger spring is going to have to go too. It hasn't got enough push to engage the trigger. And let's see if it makes a noise. It makes a noise. Excellent. So more than likely, the only thing we've got to do internally is 
replace the trigger retain, return spring and check the seals inside the gun and the seals on the end of the plunger assembly. We get that all done up and uh, get the stock fixed. We're going to strip the paint and fire blow it, fix the uh, problem with the shot tube and replace the lever. Should be easy enough. And the gun will be back up and running and back in the customer's hands. Nice going. This is Shane Bruce, Rustin Mod Daisy, signing off.